creator of heaven and earth. Amen. The maker of man. Sure. I want to lift his name on high. Because without him, we cannot do anything. Amen. From the rising of the sun, even down to the dawn setting the same. He is God and he alone is God. And I want to greet his son, our Lord and Savior, who sits at his right hand and who makes intercession for you and I. Amen. Oh, he take up the priesthood from man and he take it to heaven and he makes intercession for his people. And I want to greet the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because see him or know him not. And Jesus said, he will send another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is here with us today to teach us all things and bring things back to our remembrance. And I want to greet Pastor Giff and Sister Giff and any other pastors, any other ministers online. I want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to greet you all, one and all saints, brethren, visiting guests, the little children. They just sang a wonderful song. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Oh my God, they bless my heart. Amen. And I want to give thanks to them today. And today's lesson is the value of our salvation. And I just want to break up the subject the word value. Uh, Sister Giff, do you have the breakdown for value? I'm sorry, value. I have it here. Okay, you have it. Go ahead. All right. The value is worth or cost to be bought with a price or to appreciate when you appreciate something, to cherish, you nourish and you cherish. It, it's a treasure. It's also love. A price does not have to be money. The price that Christ paid, it was his life. So when you are bought with a price, you are bought with a value. So I just wanted to break down the word value. And the word also salvation. Salvation, the act of saving someone from sin or evil. To rescue, to save from, or to, to deliver. A lot of times we need a deliverance in different ways. Deliverance of the mind. We have mind fight. Deliverance from danger, difficulty, sickness, death. Perseverance from destruction or failure, liberation from ignorance or illusions. So I just want to break down salvation. And we know that we have heard the joyful song that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. And we all want to be saved. But a lot of times we need things that we don't know it. We don't know how about to go and get it. So I will just break these words down a little and we can go ahead. Now the first scripture, it would be Luke chapter 19 from verse five to verse 10. And I'm gonna ask Sister Gift. To do the reading, please. Luke chapter 19 from verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So here is Jesus going through Jericho. And a man, which is a tax collector, his name is Zacchaeus. And he heard that Jesus was passing through. So he was a man and he was shot in statue. So he ran ahead and he went and he climbed in a tree because the crowd, he could not press through the crowd. So he wanted to see our savior. So he went into that sycamore tree and when our Lord saw him, he called him by his name and he told him to come down. Make haste, I must abide at your house today. We praise the Lord. Amen. When the Lord wants to abide with you, you must be doing something right. You must have a zeal. You must have something inside of you seeking earnestly, wanting to be saved. Don't know how, but waiting patiently. And when that time has come, Zacchaeus made sure he saw him. He did not let the crowd stop him. So he climbed a little higher. We praise God. Go ahead, my sister. Luke chapter 19, verse 6. And he made haste and come down and came down and received him joyfully. Praise the Lord. So he made haste and came down and received the Lord, our Savior, with joy. He was happy to know that the Savior is passing. And he acknowledged him and he wants to abide in his house. We must receive him with joy and happiness and gladness of heart because it was not a simple, it was not an ordinary work for our Lord to come down from heaven, to come and dwell among us, to come walk among man, to come and make himself a little lower than the angels just to save you and I just to help us in every situation, every way possible. So we must receive him with joyfulness, gladness of heart. We praise God. Glory to God. Go ahead, my sister. Luke chapter 19, verse Number 7. Seven. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. My God. My God. Not all have that joyfulness and happiness. Not all want what Zacchaeus wanted. Not all is going to receive it today. But if you have a zeal and you want to press your way, you can be like Zacchaeus today. You can climb high. You can climb to the left. You can climb to the right. You can go under the bench. You can press your way, whatever it takes, but not all. Because some are murmurers, some are complainers, not all going to receive it. Glory to God. 
because they said he abide with sinner. But we go down a little further. Go ahead, my sister. With Luke chapter 19, verse 8. Verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him for hope. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Zacchaeus was so happy, a tax collector. He probably collected more than he should. And he's saying, up to the half of my goods, he will give away to the poor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, have mercy upon you. Lord, up to half. Many God. people have things and they don't want to give you not even a pinch out of it. But here is Zacchaeus saying, I will give to the poor up to half of my goods. And if I have taken anything from any man, I am not going to repay him twice, but four times as much I will give him back. He was with happiness and joyfulness that the Savior recognized him, called him by name, and abide with him. He was an happy person. As we see that Zacchaeus restored anyone that he has taken anything from. I remember when people are asking for things, they say, Lord, let me have a double portion. Sometimes we work and we want to get time and a half, double time, triple time. But Zacchaeus went above and beyond. And glory, it was pleasing with the Lord. Glory to God. Go ahead, my sister, verse 9. Luke chapter 19, verse 9. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is the son of Abraham. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we see here, when Jesus heard the things that Zacchaeus said, up to the half of my goods, and if I've taken anything from any man, I'm going to pay them back four times. Jesus was very pleasing with Zacchaeus, and he said to Zacchaeus, this day salvation came to this house. Glory to God. I am saying to you, my brothers and sisters, salvation is for the rich. Salvation is for the poor. Salvation is for the middle class. It doesn't matter who you are today. Salvation can come to you. Salvation can come to I. Once I was lost, but now I am found. Zacchaeus was blind, but now he has seen. He has seen the salvation of God. Came right to his house. We praise the Lord. So, I'm going to continue with verse 10. Uh, Sister Gift, verse 10. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. My God. To seek and to save that was lost. Sometimes we get lost on this way. Sometimes we get lost on this journey. Sometimes we don't even know ourselves. But to know that there is a Savior 
and we can receive him with joyfulness and gladness of heart. And to know that you can be lost and found. Oh, today, you can have him today. Do you remember when salvation came to you? Do you remember that moment when you receive salvation? I remember when I was praying and fasting and asking God to receive his spirit. And I was on three days fasting. And the second day, I heard the knocking. At first, I thought it was a knocking at the front door. Then I heard a tapping. Then I realized who it was. Then I said, welcome. And that's when I received the Spirit of God, the quickening, for the very first time. I am saying to you, it is not a light thing that is done for us today. Salvation is full and free. And we should not take it lightly. It has value. It saves you and I. We bless the Lord. Glory to God. Now, we're going to take a second reading here from Exodus chapter 14. Verse 13 and 14. Exod Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 reads, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today. For the Egyptians who ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Glory to God. So, the children of Israel, we know that they were in bondage for so long. And after so long of a time, God had kept them in a place in Goshen. And it was time for them to leave because God has told our forefathers that the children were, his seed was going to be for about 400 years. They were going bondage and slavery. And at the end of that time has come. And oh God, when the children of Israel, they had left, they had saw the Egyptian. They had fear. They know that the Egyptian have swords and they can kill. And they were fearful. But God said, fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Egyptians that you see today, you're going to see them no more forever. Because I, God, Almighty God, saying, He's going to take care of it for you. He's going to take care of it for me. He is going to free us from bondage and slavery. So it was not a light thing for God to do. The Egyptian, they want to kill, but he uses Moses. Oh, no. It was not my child that was going to die, but it was your firstborn that was going to die because God have a plan. God have a plan today. We praise God. I am saying to you that God saves. God guide us. God protects us. There is no double... Minded about it. Oh God, I am saying to you, heaven moves on our behalf. God moves on our behalf. Jesus moves on our behalf. The Holy Spirit moves 
on our behalf. Angels move on our behalf for the saving of mankind. Nobody can touch you. Not a dog move his tongue. When the children of Israel were moving, because the whole soul of heaven was moving with them. Glory to God. Uh, read verse 14 for me, please. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. My God. So here is the Bible telling us that no matter what situation that we are in today, that the Lord is going to fight for you. Because some of us, the enemy is too strong for us. I remember in the Bible, when Daniel prayed, and the Bible said from the very first time he heard his prayer, but the prince of Persia hold the angel from heaven, and he hold him not for a short time, he hold him for 21 days. They are powerful. They hold the angel of God. But Michael the archangel came down and loosed him and set him free. For three weeks, he did not report to heaven. So I know that the enemy is strong. But we have a God which is stronger than anything else. We have a God that will fight for you. He will fight for me. He did it before. He will do it again. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. Send a revival. Revive us again. Many are longing because the enemy have some wrapped up. I remember I had the Lord on my mind, and I was in my truck, and I was asleep. And when I woke up, I was in a coffin. And all I remember, I realized where I was. And I saw some lines going down because it seemed like it was three boards on top of it in the box. And I was trying to push up. I realized I was buried alive. Oh God, I cry out. I cried out to the Lord. Oh God, the things that the enemy tried to do to us, to our spirit, to our mind, to enslave us, to bind us, to hold us captive. Oh, God, he has got a short time, and he wants to hold us random. He wants to hold us here. But my brothers and sisters, oh, salvation is full and free. And I'm thanking God today for the able way he has moved on our behalf. Oh, the angel has moved. Oh, Christ has moved the children of Israel. Open up the Red Sea. The Red Sea was like a wall onto the right and onto the left. Oh God, He sent a strong glory to God, a strong east wind. Oh God, to God be the glory. I'm going to ask Sister to continue to read, even verse 19. Exodus chapter 14, verse 19. Exodus chapter 14, verse 19. 
and the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came. My God. Go ahead, sister. Read 20 also. Verse 20. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. We praise the Lord. Oh my God. So we see the angel is moving on the children of Israel behalf. So, which went before the camp of Israel, removed, went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from their face and stood behind them. So God is moving on behalf of the children of Israel and holding back fear on his army because the enemy is right there. But God hold us, the children of Israel, there, and he hold off the enemy. God is an awesome God today. He is a great God. He is a wonderful God. Oh, God of heaven, the whole soul, they think they can fight against God, but no man can fight against God and win. But it gave light in the night for these so that no one came near to the other all night. Sanctify ourselves. The children of Israel have to remain sanctified. When God saves us, we have to remain sanctified. We have to remain in the condition that he wants us to be in. Glory to God. I see God is moving. And today I know he moves and he saves. We see what happened before with Lazarus. Now we went back into the Old Testament and we see what the Almighty God did. What a mighty God we serve. Glory to God. My sister read verse 21. Exodus chapter 14, verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. Verse 22. 22. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a walled unto them on their right hand and on their left praise the lord so we see the, the household of heaven moving on behalf he sent a strong east wind all night in the midst of the sea dry to dry the land and the children of israel walk through you know how long that water has been there? And God dried up this, the ground so they can walk on dry land. All night, they did not walk into no sabi water. 
They did not walk in a two feet water or a three feet water, but they walked on dry land. Oh God, it was must have been a sight to see, to be there. But today we know and we understand that God moved on behalf of the children of Israel and saved them. Glory to God. To God be the glory in such a time. Ever since I was born till now, I have never heard anything like this. For the seed to stand up like wall, and to the left and unto the right, and the ground was dry, and the children walked thereof. God is moving. Stand back and see the salvation of God. Glory to God. So I'm going to ask my sister to finish reading off the other two. Exodus chapter 14, verse 23. And the, and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Verse 24. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Verse 25. Glory to God. And took Glory. off their chariot wheels that they drove them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, My God, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Verse 26. Glory to God. Verse 26. We... No, no, no. We stop at 20, 25. It's good. It's good. So, glory to God. We see here. The Egyptian pursued and went after the children of Israel. But God have a plan. And sometimes we know the enemy is at our heel. And they're after us. And we know that they're after us. But God have a plan. We just have to stay steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the word of God. We don't want to dirty up our spirit or our soul. We want to be sanctified at all times and just pray to the almighty god he will move on your behalf he will move on my behalf because he is a god that saves he is a god that kills and make alive again he brings salvation to everyone and if you do not want to take his salvation you are of the adversary i am saying to you today God will trouble them that trouble us. I can see where the household, dear Lord, in the 25th verse, 24th verse, when it says, And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptian through the pillow of fire and the cloud and trouble the host of the Egyptian. We know that the enemy cannot trouble you if the Lord is fighting for you because they are too strong for us at times. And we know that the Lord will take care of the situation because the Lord troubled them. He looked to the fire and he started to pull their wheel off. He started to pull their chariot wheel off. And when they came in the midst of the sea, it was not their God to open the sea and to let them to walk on dry land. And they went into the, into the sea, and we know what happened to them. That the God of Israel covered them because he said it. The Egyptian that you see today, you see them no more. We know that God buried them with the water, and we know from the previous reading 
what had happened to the Egyptians down there. He was not finished with them. He opened the hearth and he sent them down, all the way down to the pit of hell. We know that God is a consuming fire and is not to be played with. Glory to God. God kills and he make alive again. So the salvation that he sent unto us, we should take it seriously. We should abide with him because he's our maker. Glory to God. We see how he fights the adversary. Oh God, imagine the children of Israel with their taskmaster on their back night and day. Glory to God. The things that were happening unto them. The slave driver, imagine with chain, with flatters. Oh, now their spirit is free. No more shackles. No more chain. Who is like this God? There is none like him. There is none can compare to him. There is none before him. And there will be none after him. To God be the glory. And I'm thanking God today for the able work, the wonderful movement that he had moved on behalf of us. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. Okay, we're going to move on right now. We're going to move on to St. John's. Chapter 4. It's going to be verse 22, 23, and 24. John chapter 4, verse 23, 22, reads, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We praise the Lord. Glory to God. And we know the story here of the woman of the well. And when she saw Jesus, and Jesus said, give me to drink. She said, the Samaritan have no dealing with the Jews. Why ask me for something to drink? Jesus told her, if you know who had asked you for something to drink. Oh God, she said she heard that the Messiah was to come. And when he come, he shall tell all things. And Jesus said to her, I am he. Jesus also let her know to go call her husband and come. And when she said, I have no husband, Jesus told her, you have told me the truth. Because you've been married to five men and the man you're with is not your husband. And oh God, when it was revealed to her, and he said, I am he, she went out and she told the whole town, come see a man. Come see a man that have told me everything I have ever done. Everybody knows her reputation. Everybody knows about her. And she brought back the people. And oh God, they abide with Jesus. Oh God of heaven. Jesus had saved them. She said, salvation is of the Jews. But come at the hour when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Bible said God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible said sanctify them through thy truth, thy word and truth. Thy law is an everlasting righteousness. And the law of God is the truth. So, Jesus, 
place something in her that she would never thirst again. Oh God, salvation is for the rich. Salvation is for the poor. Salvation is for each and every one. Glory to God. I am saying to you today that we can have it. Maybe someone is here on the line that don't have it yet. Maybe someone will listen to the message uh, later on at another time. I am saying to you that you have difficult times at times looking for love in other places, looking for things that cannot satisfy. But Jesus, he saves the old soul of heaven. There is three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And oh, if you ask of him, you shall receive. You shall because he wants us to choose life and live. As we see and we know, he told even Jezebel, he said, I gave her space to repent, but she repented not. Oh my God, he gave us space at times to be sorry and to turn away from the things that is wrong. But he can take the ones that is wrong and he can make them right today. Oh God of heaven, the value of our salvation. It was bought with a price. It was bought with a high price. We are talking about value. There is a cage on my job that it is called high value. And you cannot just go there and take anything out. They give you a special paper because it is not normal. One small package might be a hundred to over a million dollars or more. So you have to get the proper paperwork to receive that and to take it out. And when you take it out, you want to make sure you keep it close to you. You want to guard it with your life. How shall we escape if we neglect such a salvation? Oh God, the great God of heaven, he says, glory to God. To God be the glory today, great things he have done. And I'm just taking a short reading again from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to 3. Therefore, we, we ought to give the more earnest heed to things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Verse 2. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord? and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. We, we praise the Lord. Well, brethren, we cannot let these things slip us. We have to be steadfast and unmovable. We cannot waver to the left or to the right because we can see if we should be punished for every transgression that we did, it would not be pretty and disobedience if we should get a just recompense. My God, people were stoned back in the days. If you slip, you were gone. So that's why I'm saying to us today, we shall not escape. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? 
that was brought down to us, to brought down to man. We must value it with a high value, a very high value. Glory to God. This is one of the armors that we should have on. The helmet of salvation. Glory to God. We must have it on at all times. We must not let it slip us. We must keep it down in us. We must secure it, must not dirty it up. Oh God, we are learning every day. It takes time to be holy. But Jesus had came and showed us the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man come unto the Father but by me. He showed us we cannot neglect such a great salvation. It is for us today. It is free for us today. You can have it if you want it. Glory to God. I am saying to you today, it is a good thing that God has done for us. It is a wonderful thing that he has done for us today. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 12, it says, Work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. So we know we have to work it out. If there is a problem, you must figure it out. You must reason it out. You must work it out. We cannot let it slip. We cannot let it slide. It will not be good. Glory to God. I am thanking God today for such a great salvation. And I remember a man that he learned at the feet of Gamelia. And oh God, he think he was doing the right thing. Until he met Jesus, he never met him personally. But he met him in the spirit. And when Jesus had put him down, Jesus blinded him and spoke to him and him only. Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why art thou persecutest thou me? He said, who art thou, Lord? He says, I am Jesus, who thou persecutest. He said, Lord, what you have me to do? Immediately, he went on three days fasting. Glory to God. And he received what he had to receive, what he was looking for. And he counts everything that he had learned as done. I am saying salvation comes to you and I in different ways. But we have to value it with a great value. We have to cherish it. We have to nourish it. And we should not forget it today. Glory to God. We should be shining. I should be shining. When somebody see me out there, somebody see you out there, there must be a difference. Just like the brother said, his boss said, if there is any change in it, it's because of him, because he saw something in him. He must see something in you and I today. We must have it. We must cherish it and nourish it and don't forget it and value it. Glory to God. One man said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believeth, first to the Jews and then to the Greeks. So we know salvation went to the Jews first. But then salvation also went to the Greeks. Salvation also went to the other people. Glory to God. Because whom it first was preached to, they had neglected it. They didn't put any value on it. They didn't nourish it. They did not cherish it. So we see that the salvation is come unto the Gentiles to provoke 
to provoke them to jealousy. God is a jealous God. He doesn't want to share us. He don't want to share with nobody. Just like you have a wife or you have a husband and you are jealous of them. God is saying to you today to value your salvation because heaven move on your behalf. Heaven move on my behalf. Heaven move on all our behalf. If we so desire it, we can have it. Glory to God. Glory to God. And we know when you are out there, there's a scripture in Acts chapter 16, verse 17, where it says the lady, she had, a, she had another spirit, and she cried, saying, These are men, servants of the Most High, come to show us the way of salvation. So even the adversary, even the spirit that is not belong to the God knows that salvation is come to man. And it's the plan of God. Glory to God. In Revelation, John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Glory to God. Oh, Father, we know that it was 144,000 that was sealed. There was 12 from each tribe. Oh, and then they saw them that great, came to great tribulation and washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, God, that is you and I. Let us hold on and cherish and not neglect such a great salvation. We will not escape it. Oh, it would not be good. Let us give thanks to the Most High. Let us do the things that we need to do. Push ourselves, write little notes, put in your bathroom, commune with our spirit. Glory to God, all these teachings that we are receiving, let us receive it with gladness, with joy of heart. Glory to God. Oh, Father, he knows everything in the mighty name of Jesus. It brings a change in our life. So we see where evil Zacchaeus, he was with gladness and joy. Some sing and some dance. We have heard the joyful sound. Oh, he came for the helpless. There was help for the needful. There was help for the shortcomers. There was help in every angle. Glory to God. Salvation came with a very high price. I am saying to you today, we should hold on to the things that we have received and learned and cherish it and nourish it and write it. Oh, and be like David. Oh, when David is in trouble, David said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked and my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. I am saying to you, be confident with what God has done for us today. Be glad because he moves in every angle. I am thanking God today to have such a wonderful opportunity to even to come before you. There is many things about salvation in the Bible, brethren. I bring a few across to you. And you can read, read them for yourself. Write them on the tables of your heart. Keep them because it saves. I'm thanking God for everything that was said and done today. I thank God for the opportunity that was brought here today. 
I thank God for the wonderful work that he has done from the rising of the sun even down to the go setting the same. From God was moving till Jesus came and he died on the cross. And we have another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And we have ministers and we have preachers and we have brethren that continue in the work. Let us continue with God and to be steadfast and unmovable and always ready to give an answer to our faith. God bless and keep you, my brothers and sisters. Glory to God. In Jesus' name.